Alright, so now in part two of this video, we're going to add two more screens to this app. One screen will have a table view with a custom cell, and the other screen will be a WebKit view that will display the website of whatever, whatever cell we click. So I'm going to drag two view controllers over. Alright, I'm just going to place them on this side. Alright. And so now, what we'll do is we will connect their segue, this second button, view table, to this screen. So let's get that out of the way. Choose present modally. And for both screens, let's add a navigation bar and a back button. This will say choose character. And this one will say view character. And we'll need back buttons, so we'll need some bar button items. I should say back. All right, now let's fill this screen with a table. Table view, that is. And this screen will fill it with a WebKit view and an activity indicator view. Remember WebKit, not WebView. WebView is deprecated. And throw an activity indicator interview and activity indicator view on top. Actually, it's right there. Make it large white. Color will be red. Now I can get the back button out of the way for this screen. Connecting that to the red or the exit icon. Choose unwind to home VC. All right, now let's move on to coding this thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. First, we're going to bring in the images I want to display in my table view. And I want to add two new view controllers to the screen. So let's start with right clicking on images or two finger clicking on images and saying add files to my Objective-C app. And the I'm going to navigate to where my images are and bring these images in. So I'll do that right now. Choose copy items if needed. Hit add. And these are courtesy of projectmkd.com, these characters that I have here, uh, where we have multiple games. One's, on, one's called Monkey Kiss and Donkey 2, a fighting game. And the other one's a learn to code game called Code Llama. Uh, it's an online 3D adventure world where you can learn to code and save the earth at the same time. The, all these characters exist inside of there. So thank you to, to that, to that uh, website for providing these images. All right, now let's add two view controllers. So we'll right click on view controllers, say new file, iOS Cocoa Touch class, subclass of UI view controller, language objective C. I'm going to call this choose site view controller. So we're going to choose the website we want to view. Give it a home. Let's add one more and get that out of the way. So right click, say new file, iOS Cocoa Touch class. I'm going to call it view site. So view the website that you're dealing with, view controller. Give it a home. 
right. So I've got almost all the files I need in the project, except one more, which we'll add a, a later on. Uh, but we'll start with choose site view controller dot h, and inside of this, we're going to define the uh, the variables that we're going to use inside this class. So this will be a table class, so it's going to focus on all of the table related operations that we need. And yes, we could have used a table view controller, but I want to focus on teaching building a table using a view controller uh, so that you know what's under the hood and you know how to work with tables because when you can easily drag a UI table view controller. Everything's configured nice and easy. But if you don't know what's going on, then how can you actually make fixes if you need to when things go wrong? So let's start with our class. We'll say interface, choose side view controller, extends UI view controller. We need to bring in two delegates to support this table. So I'm going to open an angle bracket and say UI table view data source, comma UI table view delegate. All right, doesn't matter what order they go in. Now let's open up our curly brackets and we're going to define three arrays. So the three arrays that are going to hold information for three different things. So list list data, the first one that we're going to create is called is is used for the names uh, of the items we have and then we are going to have something called site data that will have all the websites for our items and then the third one is called image data which will have all of the images for our items so we'll say ns array it's going to call it list data and then ns array site data and finally ns array image data and let's do the property declarations for all three. And notice I'm using NS array and not NS mutable array. Why? Because I'm going to hard code the information here and not overwrite it. So if you had arrays that you wanted to overwrite, you would use NS mutable array. So if you ever want to update values, that's the one you use. So we'll say at property non atomic strong and then ns array list data all right and that's our header file so now let's move over to the m file and code up the code side of things for this So let's first start off by synthesizing these variables. So we'll say synthesize list data, image data, site data. And unlike Swift, where you could automatically hard code all your information directly into your variable declarations for your class, we have to unfortunately rely on a method. So in this case, we're going to rely on view did load to initialize our three arrays. So we'll start with list data by saying list data equals, and we're, and we're going to call from NS array the method array with objects. And I actually like the one that has the nil at the end because we have to nil terminate all of our collection definitions in this language. And also, using array with objects, we don't have to worry about using alloc and init, the keywords we use for instantiating an object because it's done behind the scenes inside array with objects. So I'm going to list out the characters from monkey, kiss, and donkey in code llama. So we'll start with monkey, and then donkey, llama, yoti, ina, Walla, Hita, finally Ion. All right. And in fact, yeah, so 
there. So now I'll do image data. So what I'm doing is I'm just listing out the file names over here under images, but in the same order as the characters here. So I'm going to say image data equals NS array, array with objects using the nil terminated one. So we have here monkey.png. Uh, donkey.png llama.png yot.png yina.png Kita.png. Finally, Ion.png. All right, and now finally, site data. Oh, just looking up here under my synthesized call, I forgot my semicolon there. I guess the carryover from Swift, when you forget your semicolons. So just don't forget your semicolon up there. All right, now for site data. Equals NS array, array with objects, and say HTTPS colon slash slash www.projectmkd.com slash monkey. And then HTTP colon slash slash www.projectmkd.com slash donkey oh, and that should be HTTPS for both colon slash slash www.projectkd.com slash llama HTTPS colon slash slash www.projectmkd.com slash yot https colon slash slash www.projectmkd.com slash yina https colon slash slash www.projectkd.com slash Walla Finally All right. Now with all this typing we did to hard code our arrays, we should take a moment and double check for anything missing. Like I'm missing a comma here because when you run your table and it crashes or you have omissions and errors in your tables, the main culprit are these three arrays. Like I just forgot a quote over here. You want to double check for all your double quotes. Make sure that your URLs are spelled correctly. Like for example, four W's instead of three by accident. And the thing is that when you're going to load your WebKit view, you'll notice that your WebKit view will display a blank and not really tell you what's wrong. So you want to double check and triple check that as well. Looks like everything's okay for my site data. I'm gonna just double check image data. And all my commas and quotes are in place. Now I'll start with list data. Everything looks fine. So my arrays look fine. Now I can go ahead and start coding up the table. So as we've learned in a past discussion, there are just a few methods, minimum methods we need to get a table up and running. The first one is number of rows. So I'll type in number of rows in section. This tells the table how many cells there are in the table. 
and we typically return back the length of the array. We let the table think about whether it's going to instantiate that many cells or just stop at however many will fit the screen. So we'll say return listData.count. Now what I'm going to do is, it's not mandatory to get up and running, but I'm going to actually bring in height for row at to tell it how thick each cell is going to be. So I'm going to say height for row at index path. I'll hard code it to 60 pixels. I'm not focusing on making it friendly for all different devices. You would want to use uh, either auto layout or uh, an if block using user interface idiom to determine which uh, device you're using. And then finally, what goes on in each cell? So we're going to use cell for row at index path. All right, now what I'll do first is I'll start with a generic table cell. All right, so we're going to use UI table view cell. And we're going to check to see, remember there's two scenarios in which this method could be firing. It's firing all the time. It's firing a lot compared to the first two. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're going to check to see if a cell is leaving the screen to be repopulated and put back on the screen. Otherwise, it's scenario one where we're still instantiating table cells and placing these items onto the screen. So let's check for scenario two by declaring a UI table of view cell. We'll call it cell equals open a square bracket and then we're, we'll look within our table view object and say DQ reusable cell with identifier. I'm just going to hard code this identifier to be the word cell. Now, if we still have cells to instantiate and place on the screen, this will return nil. So we'll say if cell equals nil, then let's instantiate a fresh cell. So we'll say cell equals, now we open up two square brackets and say UI table of view cell alloc and init with style. And the style is going to be UI table view cell style default. And the reuse identifier will be cell. Close that curly. But either way, at this line of code, after this closing curly, we have a cell that we can work with. It's either a cell leaving the screen or it's a fresh cell that we have just instantiated. So let's go ahead and populate this information with current information from our array. We'll start with just the name of the character. So we'll say cell.textlabel.text is equal to list data object at index index path dot row. There. I could say return cell, but just to illustrate a little comparison with Swift versus Objective C. So you notice in Swift that we can use dot this and dot that. So like the little dot notation to shortcut variables instead of having to type out the full definition of the variable and location in a class. And the reason probably came out of lines like I'm about to type which is an accessory for the table cell. So I'm going to say cell.accessory type is equal to, and actually this, I'm pretty sure this word had a lot to do with the invention of that feature in Swift, which is UI table of view cell accessory, dis I'm going to choose disclosure indicator. Now having super long variable names and method names in this language was probably a painful thing for most programmers back then and would probably pave the way for uh, the creation of the dot notation that we see in Swift. All right, we have enough to, to run. So we just have to switch back to our storyboard and connect things up and then test out and make sure that our generic table cells are up and running. So we'll go to main.storyboard. I'm just going to click on the table view itself. Go to my connections inspector. Now we have data source and delegate, but there's something missing though. 
If I mouse over a yellow circle, it's still closed to, it's still connected to view controller. So this is no good. I can't connect this up yet. Uh, so what we have to do first is connect on yellow circle, go to our identity inspector, and this is going to be choose say view controller. And let's get this out of the way, clicking on the yellow circle for this screen. This is supposed to be view site view controller. Make sure it's view site view controller, not view controller, because they're so similar in name. And so now if I click on the table view itself, go back to connections inspector, connect, I have to connect data source and delegate to the yellow circle, right? And it should say choose side view controller. Do the same for delegate. And it should say choose side view controller. Now we do that because it tells the table view to look inside yellow circle, which is represented by choose side view controller for the support methods it needs to display that table. Since we're at it, let's connect the back button up to the exit icon. Choose unwind to home VC and give it a run. And hit view table and this is what we should see. All right, list of the characters. Okay, so now we know that our generic table cell works. Let's get our custom table cell working where we have a logo and we have some primary text and some secondary text. So like a title and subtitles. That's what we're gonna focus on for, t for, for now. So to do that, we need a customized table cell. So I'm gonna right click on classes and add a new table, new file. The iOS Cocoa Touch class and the subclass of UI table view cell. I'll call it site cell. So we'll call it site cell. This language is still objective C. Give it a home. All right, there are two ways to do customized table cells. There's the easy way and the hard way. I am showing you the hard way today. So what we'll do is start off in our header file, which is sitecell.h, and we'll start by defining the objects we're going to have in our table cell. So I'll open up a set of curlies and I'm going to have two UI labels and a UI image view. So I'm going to say UI label, primary label, UI label, secondary label, and UI image view, my image view. And we'll do property declarations for all three. And that's our header file for site cell. All right, so let's switch over to the M file and code up our custom table cell. Now we'll start by synthesizing all three objects. So primary label, secondary label, and my image view. We're not gonna use either of these methods today, but just to recap what these do. So awake from nib, think of that as like a viewed and load type method, executes code automatically upon loading this table cell. And set selected is a useful method for if you click on the cell, maybe you wanna highlight it, make it look like it's been selected, maybe change the font to be red or something. But you can find some use with that one as well. Instead, we're gonna use two different methods. So the first one is called init with style. All right. Now, now init with style is a constructor. And constructors in Objective-C 
follow a strict rigid format that we didn't really care for much in Swift. So the first step is that we have to call the super constructor, which we had to do in Swift, but we have to do it at the beginning here in Objective-C. So I'm going to say self equals, open a square bracket, call super, and it's init with style and reuse identifier. And we're just going to pass through the variables that were passed in. So style and reuse identifier were both passed in to the methods here. So I'm going to say style is style. Now notice I'm retyping the methods here. And so reuse identifier is reuse identifier. That's because, don't be fooled by the text there, that's just a placeholder. And compilers don't see that. They just see a blank space. And so you have to actually replace it with actual variable names. And the nice thing is we're just fishing through the variable names here. All right. Now, barring your phone falling apart and catching fire or something and things are dying in your phone, this should return back itself. And you should be able to enter this if statement by saying if self. So you can do your initialization code inside of here. We'll just say return self to get that out of the way. But now I want to initialize primary label, secondary label, and my image view. So first thing I'll do with primary label is instantiate it. So I'll say primary label equals open two square brackets, UI label, alloc, and init. So that instantiates the primary label object. I'm going to add a few settings here. So let's say primary label dot text alignment equals ns text alignment left. So left justify. And then let's set the font size. So primary label dot font equals open a square bracket, say UI font. We'll say system font of size. And I'll say that the font is 18 pixels. And let's set the color. So primary label dot text color equals open a square bracket and say UI color black color and just to be thorough primary label dot background color equals open a square bracket UI color clear color in case you want to add a background image to this table view now that's it for primary label I don't want to retype this again for secondary label. Most of the settings are the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste. All right. And change the word primary to the word secondary. And the only changes I'll make here is that font will make it a font 12. And text color will make it blue color to make it look more like a link. All right, so primary and secondary colors are in place. Now, image view, we're not really going to do anything with image view uh, because all the image view stuff will be done inside cell for row at. So I'm only going to instantiate image view. So I'll say my image view equals, and then open two square brackets, UI image view, alloc, and init. Now let's add these three objects to the table cell by saying, opening square brackets, self.content view. Add subview for a primary label and self.content view. Add subview 
for a secondary label. Self.content view, add sub view for my image view. Now, that's it for the constructor. So you can see this is everything we have for the constructor. Now, the only thing left here is to add the location and size for these three items. We're going to do that in another method called layout subviews. So let's scroll up. And I'm going to add a new method right here called layout subviews. All right, now we're going to apply it to the frame variable of all three objects because the frame variable tracks x, y, width, and height. So we'll start with my image view dot frame is equal to. Now the CG objects are nice because we don't have to go through the square bracketed approach to instantiate them. Instead, we'll just say CG rect make. There it is, only one overload. All right, and so the image view is going to be at 5, 5. The width will be 460 by 30. Actually, this is the image view. It's going to be 45 by 45. So the, it'll be 5, 5, 45, 45. Now primary label dot frame will be a CG rect make and it'll be at 110, 5 and this will be 460 by 30. And finally secondary label dot frame is equal to CG rect make and this will be 110, 30, and then 460 by 30. All right, now we are done this class. And now we can switch back to self row at and replace our generic table cell with this custom cell. So let's do that. Let's switch back to choose site view controller dot m go to cell for row at and now the thing about objective c as opposed to swift is when you when swift when you create an object you could just start using it right away but n this language we have to, we follow more of the c style uh, methodology where if you declare an object you have to import its header file or include its header file and we have to do that here too so if i want to take advantage of site cell I have to scroll to the top of the file, and you already see an import statement here. We're going to add to this import statement by saying import, open set of double quotes, and say site cell dot h. Now I can scroll back to UI to to sorry to self row at, and start using that object. So. The nice thing here is that it's not too difficult to change things. So first, my declaration here of UI table view cell will now become site cell. All right, so site cell, cell equals table view, DQ as well as uh, use both cell with identifier for cell. Cell is nil. Cell equals now. We have to change this to be site cell as well. All right. So site cell alloc and hit with style and dot dot dot. Now I have to modify this line because text label belongs inside the generic table cell. And so we have to replace this text label with primary label. So now primary label will have the character name. And secondary label will have the character website. So cell dot secondary label dot text is equal to site data object at index index path dot row and now for the image itself a little extra hurdles to go through but what we're going to say here is cell 
dot my image view dot image is equal to open a square bracket because now it's looking for a UI image object. So we're going to say UI image. We're going to use the method image named because it's expecting a string here. Our string is inside our image data array, so we have to open up a square bracket and say image data object at index index path dot row. All right. Now our table cell has been converted to our secondary to our new site cell object with primary label, secondary label, and my image view. And now you can run it again, no connections needed, and verify that everything works. So I'll save view table. And let's see what's going on here. So we have a crash. And it's good we have a crash because we should see what's going on here. A little bit of debugging. Ah, index 7. All right, we forgot a character. That's why. So let's explain the crash here, first of all. So just for your knowledge, when it crashes, your best bet is to go to your console here and see what it is. Now, it's saying that I'm, I actually have, I, I have to actually scroll to the top of my console typically, and it's saying here, ton, uncaught exception, object index, index seven is beyond the bounds. That tells me I have to go back and look at my arrays and see what's going on. So let's see here, monkey, donkey, llama, yoti, yina, walla, hita, ion. Here I have monkey, donkey, llama, yoti, yina. Oops, I skipped walla. So let's add him in. So wallet.png. So I tell you, even with this, your your arrays are your first culprit. Now we have monkey, donkey, llama, yoti, yina, walla, hita, ion. So I have eight here as well. Aha, another comma forgotten. Right there. Let's try again. And there we go. So a little bit of debugging on our part, but we're able to display all of our characters here now. So now the next step is to set it up so that when we click on a cell, it goes to the third page and we display the website for that corresponding page. All right, so now before we can make this clickable to go to the next screen, uh, we need a way to save our website URL so that we can pass it to the next screen. There's a multiple different ways we can do this. One, we could uh, save this in a SQLite database, but that might be like overkill. Uh, we can use user defaults, which will be t discussed in a future video. Uh, but for now, let's just use app delegate since we used app delegate in the past and it's pretty easy to use. So we're going to create a variable inside app delegate uh, to save our variable. So I'm going to go to app delegate.h and let's create a class variable for this. So I'm going to open a set of curly brackets. We'll say ns string and call it selected URL. And then we'll do a property declaration for this. All right, so we'll do that. And we'll do a synthesize for a selected URL as well. All right, so let's synthesize this variable. All right, so now Let's focus on finishing up choose site view controller.m to support this object. But before we do, let's we actually need to do one extra thing inside main.storyboard. That is to create a segue from this screen to this screen. 
So let's click on the yellow circle and control drag and choose present modally. So it creates a segue from here to here. But we have to give this segue a name because we're going to call it in code. So let's click on the line itself. It's anywhere on the line or the arrow. Let's go to its attributes inspector. And there's a keyword called identifier. I'm going to call it choose segue to view to be descriptive about it. But you can simplify it down to whatever you want, something simple if you want. Uh, just as long as you have a, a name that you're using correctly so that you're not crashing your app when you try and segue to this third page. So we have choose segue to view. We're going to come back and finish this off at the end uh, once we have our remaining outlets in place. But let's move back to choose side view controller dot M to uh, finish that class and to finish support for this operation here. All right. So towards the end here, before I finish my event handler or start my event handler, let's create an unwind segue method because we're going to navigate to the third page and then segue back to this page uh, when when we need to. So I'm going to add an IB action. I'm going to call it unwind to choose VC. Get rid of that extra round bracket, put my curlies in, but most importantly, change ID to UI storyboard segue star. All right, that's good enough for that unwind method. Now let's put in the support method for segueing to this final page. So the support method that's like our pseudo event handler for clicking on a cell is called did select row at index path. All right, now we want to save our URL inside app delegate. Uh, so we need to request access to app delegate, but we need to bring in its header file first before we can actually declare app delegate. So we need to scroll to the top of the screen. I'm going to import app delegate. Dot h. Now we can scroll back to that method. We can declare app delegate. So we can say app delegate. We call it main delegate. Equals open two square brackets, UI application, shared application, and then outside of one of the square brackets is delegate. Now it's going to complain. It'll want us to cast. So we need to cast this as app delegate star. All right. Now, let's save our website that was selected into selected URL by saying main delegate dot selected URL is equal to site data object at index index path dot row. And now we can segue to the final page, which is self perform segue with identifier. And just the same as I typed, you can either copy and paste from your storyboard, but it was choose segue to view. Now, if you change to something else, make sure you choose that something else or write that something else. Sender will just say self. OK, so we are complete for this particular object. Now we need to focus our attention on view site view controller to get the website working for us. So before we do that, we're using WebKit view. So we have to bring in WebKit's framework. Otherwise, it's going to crash when we try to run this thing. So I'm going to go to project settings. 
scroll to the bottom, there's linked frameworks and libraries, type in WebKit, hit add, and there's webkit.framework. Now I can move my attention to viewsiteviewcontroller.h and start coding the header file for viewsiteviewcontroller. Now I'm going to be declaring a webkit, so I have to import open a set of angle brackets though because it's like a system file just like UIKit above and say webkit.h Alright, now I can look at my class definition and say interface, view side view controller, extends UI view controller, but we need inside angle brackets WK navigation delegate. I'll say IB outlet, WK web view, and then web view. And we need an activity indicator view. So we need the web view to display the website and activity indicator view to display our loading indicator. So we'll say IB outlet, UI activity indicator view. It's going to call it activity. Let's do our property declarations for both. So property non-atomic strong for both. All right. Okay. Now, let's switch over to the M file and let's code up this final class here. So first thing to do is to synthesize our two variables. So, and since we're at it, we know that our URL is inside app delegate, so let's just get out of the way and import app delegate dot h. All right, so now that that's done, let's also synthesize web view and activity. All right, now we're going to use view did load to automatically load the website that we need. But before we do that, let's actually bring in our support methods to support the loading and unloading of the activity indicator. So the first one is did start provisional navigation. All right, in which we're going to say activity is hidden or sorry, set hidden to now there's no concept of true or false. In this language, it's just yes and no. So we're going to say no. We don't want to hide it. And activity start animating. And then did finish. Okay, we're going to say activity set hidden to yes and activity stop animating. All right, so we've got our two support methods there for activity indicator to start and stop animating. Now, let's look at view to load and get our website to load. So first thing we need to do is declare app delegate. So we're going to say app delegate, call it main delegate equals casting it to app delegate star. All right, open two square brackets, UI application, shared application, delegate. All right, now it's a four step process to getting a website to display a website or web view to display a website. 
So first we declare our website URL using nsurl by saying nsurl. It's going to call it URL address equals open a square bracket for nsurl URL with string is the method. So in this method, URL with string is where we declare the website. That website is inside main delegate, so we'll say main delegate dot selected URL. All right. Now we need a URL request object to manage the transaction from here to the web server that has the 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 website pages. So we'll say ns URL request. I'm just going to call it URL on its own and equal square bracket ns URL request. We'll say request with URL passing in URL address. Third, we tell the web view to make it happen. So like Picard would say, make it so. Say web view load request for URL. And finally, tell the WebKit view to look for support methods within itself or within this class. So web view dot navigation delegate equals self. All right, now we're done coding for this app. And what we need to do now is connect things up and we can run this thing. So let's switch back to main.storyboard and click on our yellow circle. And before we even connect things up, we have our back button. Let's connect our back button to the exit icon, get that out of the way. Choose unwind to choose VC. Now we can go to our connections inspector. Let's click on the yellow circle again. So there is activity to the activity indicator, web view to the WebKit view. Now you can run it and verify everything works. But I want to show you one final thing. We don't need it for this one because I'm using all insecure websites. But if you were following along and you were using in insecure websites, as opposed to me using secure ones, you would need to open a security hole, which is not recommended, but I'll show it to you anyway. It's inside info.plist. So under information property list, you want to tell the app that it's allowed to access HTTP URLs. So first we add a new category by hitting the plus sign. And we type in app with a capital A because it's case sensitive space transport with a capital T. So there is app transport security settings is what we want. We hit enter, hit enter again to autocomplete. I need a sub setting for this setting. So I hit the arrow over here and make a point down that opens it up. Now I can go to the plus sign that's on the other end of it. And I can do allow arbitrary loads, which is the most insecure. Allow arbitrary loads in web view, which is probably what I should be doing. Accepting domains is actually what I really should be doing to specify which URLs I want to allow. I'll be lazy and just say allow arbitrary loads, hit enter, and change the no to a yes. And you can experiment with the other settings as well on your own time and, and see how things work for you. But now if I run it, and I go view table, there's my table. If I go to say yo t, it's loading, loading. There is Walla. There is character yo t. All right. If I hit back, go to say Walla. All right, there he is. Hit back. Llama. All right, and there you have it. 
a fully functioning Objective C app and with a table view, custom table cells, then navigate to the website of the character, and that's it.